More than 1,100 schools across our nation have raised money for the memorial. Let me just tell you about one of them, Milwaukee High School in Milwaukee, Oregon. Five years ago, a teacher named Ken Buckles wanted to pay tribute to the World War II veterans. He and his students searched out local veterans and invited them to school for a Living History Day. Earlier this week, Living History Day 2000 honored more than 3,000 veterans with a recreated USO show that filled the pro basketball arena. Living History Day. Living History Day. Living History. Living History Day. History came alive today at Milwaukee High School as students paid tribute to more than 600 veterans from our area. It's a one-of-a-kind event that takes enormous effort and brings extraordinary results. 100-year-old Howard Ramsey led the way into a gym filled with appreciative students. He served in the American Expeditionary Forces in France during World War I. This is such an awesome day. Generations of soldiers followed, basking in cheers that many had never heard before. For them, it was a morning to remember. In their classrooms, they learned of the hardships and heroics of war. And I flew 43 missions in P-51s. P-51 was an excellent plane. The, uh, the pilot ordered us to bail out. They learned of the sacrifices of airmen like Hap Rogers. He was about their age when his B-17 went down over Hungary. And, uh, of course, I was scared stiff coming down in the parachute. All the, the gunners were shooting at us, the Russians were shooting at us, the Germans were shooting at us. I got a 37-millimeter cannon shell right through my flying suit. Did you actually fly cover for any oh, of yeah. us? I was on, on, the, on the Berlin mission. They flew cover for us. But the thing that I regret is that they were segregated at that time, and we couldn't even socialize with them. We were beaten, went without food. I sat in the dark, in a hole. I didn't see daylight for seven months, uh, but I survived. Didn't survived to share the story with students That's anxious to learn. The kids raised $18,000 for this event, and in return were given priceless history and advice to remember. Home. So whatever you do all your life, try to keep out of another war. It's just a killing field, that's all it is. Nobody would have thought this show could have been put on here. Mr. Buckles had the dream. The school all came together. This didn't have Hollywood. It didn't have millions of dollars of outside money. But what a show and what an expression of patriotism this is. And I would like for all of you to give a standing ovation to the students and Mr. Buckles and all the people involved in showing the world what we're made of.
Anyway, we lost 1,100 men, and the memory is tough. But I'm here, and I'm happy, I'm lucky. On April 29, 1945, amidst all the despair and the most the most glorious event happened to us. American troops marched into Dachau concentration camps and liberated us. Mr. Eigner, I'd like you to meet Jack Capel. He was one of the American troops. Great pleasure to meet you, Mr. Eigner. I probably met you then. You would have been a boy. And there were some boys there little boys in their striped suits. Something I'll never forget. So as the USO show begins, we're going to hand things over to Matt Strong from Clackamas High School and Justine Ryan from Milwaukee High School to be the MCs for this USO show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pain or pleasure to introduce to you none other than Rosie the Riveter here in the flesh. Doc Jack Bradley here. I saw Sergeant Mike and four of his men circle around a large pole with a flag wrapped around it. Mike saw me walking past with a load of bandages in my arms. He asked me to stop and help. I dropped the bandages and moved to the pole, right between Mike and Harlan. I gripped the pole with the guys, and then it was up. The six of us struggled in the whipping wind. When the pole was fully upright, three of the guys forced it into the ground. Mike anchored things. Within a few more seconds, the flagpole was freestanding, the cloth snapping and crackling in the wind. We continue to rely on our brave and steadfast service men and women to defend our freedom. I join the people of Portland and a grateful nation in expressing sincere appreciation for your sacrifice and service. Best wishes for a memorable celebration. President George W. Bush. You to tell me what's the guy's name on first base. What's the guy's name on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't and know. And don't be afraid. I want to be loved by you. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, Mona. I'll dance with the cows till she comes home. Sitting on the dock of the bay. You lost that love of the truth. That must endure oh, when the world is free. For waves of gray. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean, I Now, what makes those kids fundraise and organize and practice for weeks on end? Many have grandparents and other relatives who fought in the war. But there must be more to it than that. They learn from their families and teachers that the good life they enjoy as Americans was made possible by the sacrifices of others more than half century ago. And maybe most important, they want us to know something positive about their own generation as well, and their desire to stand for something greater than themselves. They didn't have the money to fly out here today, but let's all of us send a loud thank you to the kids at Milwaukee High School and their teacher, 
Ken Buckles and all the other young people who have supported this cause.